Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over an authentic relating agreement that we uh, use for our authentic relating games nights. Um, the agreement is check your assumptions. And so pretty much every authentic relating uh, community, maybe not all of them, uh, most of the big ones are going to have agreements that they share every night before you play an authentic relating games nights. Uh, games night so that way everyone is on the same page we know what the boundaries are we know like um, kind of what's expected so that way we can all play in like a container of safety and so here in Tulsa Oklahoma and the authentic relating community that I'm starting uh, we have six agreements and uh, you know I might go over more of them in different videos um, most communities have about six or seven, and they generally uh, all look about the same. Some of them may substitute an agreement for other ones. It's kind of just the, um, you know, the discretion of the community leader and which agreements they like. But checking your assumptions is one of the ones that we use and that most uh, AR communities use, and AR is just authentic relating. And this is a super powerful sort of principle, um, checking your assumptions, because as humans, we're assuming things about things and people and ourselves all the time. And in this context, we're mostly uh, talking about, you know, assuming things about others um, that we have the capability to check on with them. And a lot of anxiety, especially social anxiety when we're around other people, comes because we have a lot of assumptions about people and about their experience and about what they think of us and all these different things and uh, it's just playing in our head over and over and it's like this looping thing where we just assume all these things about people and uh, we're letting those assumptions affect us and kind of control our behavior and give us anxiety and things like that and so like one super huge benefit that I see in checking your assumption is you often get like instant anxiety relief and the funny thing is we get a lot of anxiety when we think about checking our assumptions we have with that person that we're assuming about. We're like, oh God, I feel so much anxiety checking to see if this is true with them because what if it is or what if it isn't? Um, but I find that the actual act of checking the assumption and getting clarity is like instant anxiety relief, even though for some reason our brain makes us think that it's gonna be such an anxiety inducer. And, you know, a lot of the anxiety comes is because we just have that looping in our head and we just, like, can't get it to shut the hell up. Um, and so when you check the assumption, you get instant clarity and then that loop is over. And there might be a new one and then you can check that. <laughs> and so in authentic relating games and, like, circling, um, maybe a common way we would check our assumptions as if somebody's body language or maybe somebody's making a face and we were just always interpreting people's actions and tone and words and things like that and we're often misinterpreting people's experiences and we're making them something else in our own head and turning that into our story about what's going on and so you know maybe somebody is like kind of looking at you and maybe they just like have a natural resting bitch face or something like that I don't know um or or they they are making a face and and you think that maybe they are bored or they like have been triggered by something you've said or done and so one option is to just like believe that and think oh they were triggered by something I did obviously look at their face they don't want to talk to me I I better not even talk to them um or you can check that and you can say hey um I'm kind of noticing that I have some like anxiety because you have this look on your face and like I'm interpreting that as you like don't like me in this moment or like I did something to upset you and uh, I just wanted to check in on that and see if that's true like did I do something to upset you or am I crazy um, and so you can really put it in a gentle way like that and and the key thing here is you want to share your experience you want to be vulnerable and share what's happening for you like you know it's uh you could just say like hey i think that you know you're looking at me funny and uh that i hurt you like what's up with that and that's a little less gentle than being like "Ooh, i noticed that i have a lot of anxiety and like i'm actually i'm scared to ask this of you but um yeah i just wanted to check in on this um and then asking like is this true is another huge key to um, getting like a really, really authentic response and a really empathetic response is like not 
being like, oh, you've kind of been looking at me funny and, and I know that, you know, I did something to hurt you, obviously. That's totally assuming and projecting and like putting, you know, almost like a blaminess on them, uh, not really owning your own experience. You're like projecting, uh, projecting uh, onto them and then taking that as truth before checking in. So saying something like, hey, I noticed that you kind of have this look and I'm interpreting it this way and uh you know I'm worried that I I hurt you uh is that true and then they can be like they can you know give you their honest answer because oftentimes we do misinterpret and then that gives them a chance to you know just like clarify you know it might be something like they're like oh no I actually just like my face has been feeling really itchy and yeah it's kind of just like annoying me and like that's what I'm annoyed about you haven't done anything to upset me um, and like, I'm, I'm sorry that like, I, that you felt that way. Um, I'm just annoyed because of the stupid itch or they might be confused. Like, oh, I didn't realize that I was making this face. I was feeling really calm and content and, uh, totally didn't have anything to do with you. Or, you know, they could be like, yeah, actually you did kind of like say this thing earlier and it did trigger something in me. And I've kind of been holding on to that, um, like not wanting to share but yeah I feel some tension around you now and the benefit of that you know that's what people are worried of is like the other person being like oh I have tension like there's tension here now and it's not like asking whether there was tension there meant that there's no tension there like <laughs> there's tension there whether you check in on your assumption or not and uh but now by checking in on your assumption we can put that tension out in the open where we can actually look at it and we can do something um you know we can we can try to figure out what's going on there where like if there's just tension there and nobody wants to talk and it's like this unspoken tension and everybody's just avoiding each other because of it um that's something you just like can't really work with and that uh will create you know a bigger gap in the connection but if you can check in and you can both be vulnerable and you can share what's actually happening for you then you can get curious and maybe the other person can be like, oh wow, yeah, I didn't realize that that had so much effect on you. I, I just was sharing this uh, story and I just kind of like blabbed it out in this moment of feeling really excited. Um, but I could see how, you know, that would feel hurtful to you. And um, now I'm feeling like sad that it impacted you that way. And um, I noticed that I, I don't want you to be impacted and that I actually want to feel more connected with you. Um, and I wonder how that lands for you. And so kind of as a general safety rule, asking somebody how that lands for them or what is that like to hear can just create an opening for like a lot of empathy and a lot of like, okay, it creates safety for them to be like, oh, okay, how did this impact for me? They actually want to know how this impacted me. And that gives them permission to be more vulnerable and to share what's happening. And if you just kind of keep dancing in the conversation this way where you're both just sharing your experience that's all it is you're not trying to necessarily fix anything like you can you can fix so many problems by both people just sharing what just happened in their experience and what's going on for them right now and um and that often will just uh naturally bring things um to like a completion and a close and so I, I pretty much always think it's a great idea to check your assumptions and it can be, you know, anxiety producing to check your assumptions. And, uh, you know, that's where our next agreement that we'll probably talk about in an another video, lean into your edge, is one of our agreements. And that's where we can play into that where it's like, ooh, this feels really edgy to um, try to talk about with this person. And but it's like if it's something you know is the right thing to do trying to lean into that edge and be like, oh, this is a little scary, but I know this is where my growth is at and where, you know, I need to step into this responsibility for the harmony of everybody. Um, then we play into leaning into our edge. And so, you know, it's, it's really focused on just trying to create more harmony and connection rather than like avoidance, like a surefire way to make sure that a connection dies and is not going to be like revived is to just avoid it completely forever. So I encourage you to try and practice this, check your assumptions, 
It's what we encourage at every games night, which creates a lot of connection and safety when it gives us everybody permission to check their assumptions in a container that's much more safe. So that way we can practice this. It's kind of what like authentic relating is for me. And I think for a lot of people is like, it's this, you know, like emotional dojo where we can actually have a space of safety to practice these skills and to see how it works in a space where it's allowed and it's expected even. And then we can feel safer to try it out and take it to the real world and uh, get some real world results that feel really good. So thank you so much for watching and let me know how you like the authentic relating content I'm putting out. I'll talk with you in the next one.